thanks for joining me in another video. I haven't done an FSD video in a while, so I figured I'd pick up the topic again. In a previous video, I had mentioned that Tesla's FSD had a geographical advantage over other systems like Waymo and Cruise, which use HD mapping. Tesla's approach to self-driving is a bit different than what some other companies do. Rather than making highly detailed maps and training for specific situations at specific locations, they use more generalized rule sets. Today we're out in Hilo Bend, which is an area that's not likely to be served by autonomous taxis or to have high-definition maps created to serve the area. According to a 2020 U.S. Census survey, Hilo Bend has a population of under 2,000 people and based on the definition of census places, this town is rural. Currently, autonomous vehicle training is being conducted in urban and suburban areas. Rural areas like this will probably be the last places that would be served by autonomous vehicles. So let's see how Tesla Beta version 10.11.2 performs driving these roads. Also, I have it set to average. Starting off the first trip at a stop sign. This car to the right of us was waving for us to go ahead. I gave a quick wave on behalf of my car. I'll be fast forwarding through some of these scenes where not too much is happening. Since it's a small town, I decided to do several short trips on both sides of the main road. In the most recent update, Tesla is now required to come to a full stop at stop signs, or at least close to it. The car gets down to one mile per hour before deciding to go. No more California rolls here. The habit of it stopping at a stop sign and then creeping forward for visibility while it's clear is still present in this release. Another stop sign. We will be seeing a lot more of these. In residential areas, the car appears to want to center itself on the street. It does move over for the oncoming car though. Also, the SUV did slightly move more to the right of the road. I disengaged here. The car does recognize larger speed bumps, but these didn't show up on the screen, so I took over. Plus, these speed bumps are really harsh. Starting the second short trip. Here we have an actual address to the post office. This clip is a good example of road quality in Arizona. The car struggles to figure out where the edges of the road are and swerves back and forth. As we get closer to the bushes and trees, it's able to define the lines and drive more confidently. Another stop sign. There aren't many traffic lights in this location. That's right, another stop sign. Not much to say here, moving on through. I disengaged here. Again with the speed bumps, even when it does recognize them, I wish it would run slower. Typically it slows down to about 15 miles per hour, but over these ones I was going about 2-3 to three miles per hour. And we've made it to the post office. Beginning our short trip number 3. Up ahead is the main road that runs through Gila Bend. It has moderate traffic, 
we need to make a right and then a pretty quick left. The right turn was good, but it hesitated getting into the left lane and swerved back. I was ready to take control, but it corrected itself. I hit the record button because of that swerve. This neighborhood was better maintained and the driving felt more natural. The car got a bit confused here because the pin was dropped in the middle of the intersection. For the most part, I have been dropping pins on parts of the map rather than entering in addresses. Starting with trip number four of six. I've never been first in line at train tracks with a train present, so this was interesting. The red lights tipped the car off and we came to a full stop. The screen animations were funny because it thought there were a bunch of semi-trucks driving past. It waited until the arms went all the way up and the lights stopped, but the car didn't proceed. I could have waited a little longer to see if the car would go ahead, but there was a line of cars behind me, so I had to manually intervene here and press on the accelerator. Here we are waiting to go straight. The car couldn't find a good spot to go, so I ended up pressing the accelerator to get across. I don't think I should have done that in this case, I should have let the car decide. After getting across, it looks like it wanted to make a left turn. I have no idea what was going on here. On to trip number five. It has been a bit rough on its performance, but it's honestly amazing it's able to perform on these roads at all.
This stop sign was heavily vandalized, but it was able to positively recognize it. On the roads that are very clearly marked, the car has no problems at all and performs perfectly. And here we are arriving at our dropped pin location. All right, our final short trip. It cut that corner tight, though based on the tracks in the dirt, it looks like we're not the only ones who did. This was a rather strange intersection with these two stop signs here. It gets stuck for a moment, but does get through it on its own. From these short drives, I can see that the better a road is marked, the better the car performs. Sometimes that's not realistic for many streets. So Tesla will need to continue to train the network on poor quality roads. We have arrived at this dog's house. Along some of the routes, there were interventions and some roughness. However, we were able to just plop FSD wherever and it navigates us to the selected destination. There is room for improvement though. Lack of transportation in rural areas is a barrier for people to access services. I would like to see if autonomous vehicles outside of the city areas would ever have an impact on this issue. Thanks for spending time with me today. Have any EV I can review? Email me at info at Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at KaiZV and Kai's Tessa. Kai is my dog. And check out my website for more EV resources at KaiZV.com. That's all for now and happy charging.